What is up, my friends? We are back yet again, fresh off the news, of course, that Liverpool have signed Alexis McAllister from Brighton and Hove Albion for a fee of 35 million, rising up to potentially 55 million with add ons. And I thought that that was going to be it for the day. I thought maybe we can just go do a stream tonight and go about our business. But there has been some more developing news in the world of Liverpool transfers. And of course, I wanted to jump straight back on and bring it to you guys now. You know the score. I'm going to talk for a few minutes, but I do want to know your thoughts, your suggestions in the comment section. Drop a like on the video. And of course, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. I have been interacting and reading through some of the comments from the Alexis McAllister announcement video earlier on. I'm pleased to see you guys so upbeat about the signing. And that, like myself, very surprised at how cheap Liverpool were able to get it done. But that's not it. The good news seems to keep on coming. Now, look, you know me. I like to credit people who break stories and credit people who give information. And a lot of the time I say, nah, there's nothing to these things or just take it with a pinch of salt. But sometimes people talk and I respect those people and I want to listen. And Anfield Index have been speaking about Manu Kone and Kefren Thuram. And I think I have to bring it to you guys because, as I've said before, I started my journey in content at Anfield Index, writing articles there for them, doing a few other bits. And I know that they're really good people. Gags and Nina and the team there have just been brilliant from day one with me when I started and I'll never forget that. So when I seen today that they say that Manu Kone and Kefren Thuram have agreed personal terms with LFC, I listened because I know the type of people that they are and this is really exciting stuff. Now if you want to have a read of it for yourself, check out the Anfield Index Twitter account or go to the Anfield Index website. Bet you never thought you'd see me speaking about competitors, but I have respect for them. And as I say, there's plenty of content for everybody, plenty of time to big up people doing good work. And they've said that according to their sources, and they aren't ITK merchants, they're pretty good people, they say that they've been told that both Kefren Thuram and Manu, Manu Kone have agreed personal terms at Liverpool Football Club. Now, that doesn't mean that Liverpool don't have to do business with Bruce Munch and Gladbach. And with Lille, of course we do. Those fees have to be ironed out. But if you add into this what Fabrizio Romano and many other journalists are saying, it does look like we're moving towards a situation in this window where we're starting to see who the targets are. Now let's start off with Manu Kone and Borussia Mönchengladbach. What do we think will be the situation there? Well, I believe from what I've read, and I've got no information of my own on this, I'm being entirely honest, I think a fee of about 30 or 35 million pounds because of Bruce e. Munch and Gladbach's financial situation will be enough to get uh, to get Manu Kone out and get him at Liverpool Football Club. Now, you've seen the stuff on social media about Kone and Thuram, you know, meeting each other while in France and stuff, and they're about to go and play in the Euros together under 21s with France. So I like the idea of having international teammates at the football club, players who know each other's style and games, and as they evolve and grow and, you know, go to senior football. We grow as a team and we get that bond and connection. So really happy to see that there is more stories to suggest that this is where Liverpool are headed with their business. So if we can say, let's say 30, 35 million for Manu Kone, and according to all journalists, you know, whoever you want to read, it does seem like that's the far easier deal for Liverpool to make because of the situation Bruce Munch and Gladbach financially, Liverpool know that they can go in there and maybe get the deal done quicker. Now, if we move on to Kefren Thuram and Lille, or not Lille, excuse me, Nice, it becomes a little bit more uh, a little bit more complicated. If I said Lille earlier on in the video, by the way, I apologise. It is, of course, Nice. Um, and I don't know if the fact that Nice is owned by Jim Radcliffe, who, of course, is looking to try and take over Manchester United, I don't know if that will complicate any negotiation. And I do think a figure that I've been told of about the same, about £35 million, could be enough. But I think it'll be a more difficult negotiation because they're not in a, a position where they need to sell. Now, it'll come down to the player himself, of course, making his wishes known. And it does look like his camp, his father and his representatives prefer the idea of him coming to Liverpool as against maybe going to Paris Saint-Germain, who was the other club that we're looking to push hard from. So let's wait and see what happens. But if we close this window with a Kone, a Thuram and Alexis McAllister in midfield, adding into Thiago, Jordan Henderson, Fabinho, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Stefan Bajcetic, I mean, we're not going too far wrong there. Plenty of reliability, plenty of 
Uh, plenty of right players in the right age bracket for me as well. So I'm not saying this is a done deal yet, but I am saying that I believe these are people that you can take their word. And if they've been told that these players have agreed terms with Liverpool, then I believe that they've agreed terms with Liverpool. But we do have to wait, of course, for the business to be done between the clubs. I think it's something we can get excited about. Now, moving on to other parts of the pitch. I've really yet to see many links for Liverpool, credible links to centre-backs. The only ones I've seen are the ones that you've seen. Mickey van der Vin from Wolfsburg, uh, Inacio from Sporting Lisbon, although that one seems to have cooled a little bit. Now, remember when we were looking at Ugarte? I think, and I know, well, I know, and you probably know, that Liverpool were looking at both those players while they were over there. What I can't tell you is if our interest in, in Ugarte, which has obviously stopped because he's gone to PSG, if that was the more, or the, how do I say this, if we were more there to look at him or we were more there to look at Inacio? I don't know the answer to that. So, Keep an eye on this. I expect Liverpool to try to get the midfield business done first and then we look to maybe move Joel Matip on. And if Joel Matip is to be sold with one year to go on his contract, I hope Liverpool are realistic in what they value him at because we did get him as a free signing from Schalke. He's been a great servant to the football club and I think we need to be understanding here. He could sit on his contract and leave if he so wished, but I think Joel will want to play football. So for me... Something eight to ten million pounds will be enough for me to consider selling Joel Matip. Um, but then who do we bring in? I really don't know. I know who I want. It, it's Josko Guardiol. Probably the same as you guys watching this video. But the one that really does intrigue me is the fullback. The only name that I have seen linked is Benjamin Pavard. And I said to you guys yesterday, 35, 40 million is the number in, in euros that Bayern Munich wants. That's being put out there by Florian Plettenberg. He is available. But I don't think we have that much of a need. Like, I don't feel that comfortable going out there and spending that much money for somebody to come in and maybe be a right back, maybe challenge Trent. And we don't know where Trent's future lies. We still have to wait and see how preseason goes and if this end of season change of uh, position from Trent or sort of change of position is one that Jurgen Klopp's going to carry on or if it was just a temporary fix. So lots of ifs, ands and buts, lots of exciting things developing. And I do think that this window is going to start to gather pace from this point on. My favourite picture, by the way, that I've seen today of all the Alexis McAllister stuff is without a doubt him and his father standing there holding up the number 10 shirt. Um, Yeah, it's it's every dream, isn't it? You you as a, a player, you'd want to share that moment with your mum and dad, and you as a parent would want to share that moment with your child. And we know he's a brother, Kevin, as well, who plays for Argentina's juniors. And I think I think there may be even a third sibling that plays football. But yeah, that was my favourite image of the day anyway. Alexis McAllister and his father both holding up the Liverpool number 10 shirt. And that is pretty much it for me tonight, my friends. You let me know your thoughts now in the comments section. Would you be happy with Manu Kone, Kevin Thuram and Alexis McAllister in this window? Who would you like? to see Liverpool looking at with regards to the centre-back situation and what type of budgets do you think we're working with here because 35, 35 and 35 for the three players 105 million is still 10 million less than Jude Bellingham who is about to be unveiled by Real Madrid next week in a six-year deal so good business for Liverpool Football Club I would like a statement signing myself I would like a bit of a a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a splash of cash just to show that we can do it, that we have the ability to do it. But we also know our owners. So look, it's over to you guys now. Let me know your thoughts. Drop a like on the video. And of course, hit that subscribe button. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.